everyone. I'm Jude Dry from IndieWire, and I'm your host for today's half hour with three songs for Benazir. I'm happy to be here with the directors and producers, both co-directors, co-producer each, um, Gulistan Mirzai and Elizabeth Mirzai. Um, it's such a fabulous film, um, both of you. It's it's touching, it's beautiful, it's informative, it's humanizing, um, really shows a side of this story that, um, as you know, doesn't often get told. Um, just for the people who maybe haven't seen, seen the film, um, can you just give a quick overview of your short? Sure, Three Songs for Benazir is a short documentary. It's a love story about a young teenage couple who live in a camp uh, for people displaced by the war in Afghanistan. And uh, the boy Shaista is very much in love with his wife Benazir. He serenades her and he dreams of becoming the first uh, from the camp and from his whole family to join the Afghan National Army. And we return to the film four years later to find really shattering consequences to those choices he had to make in order to build a life together with Benazir that um, we think say a lot about the human cost of life on the ground in Afghanistan. Very well put. And we're going to throw it to the trailer now. I'm <laughs> I got chills watching that trailer. He has such a beautiful voice. He does. Yeah, <laughs> we, we agree. We were really drawn to just everything about him. Mm. Yeah, he became a friend uh, as you were as you were filming, right? Yes. He became a really good friend. Um, yeah, we I mean, you can talk a little about yeah. your friendship, too. We, we, um, um, Elizabeth, I know Pshayas uh, over 12 years ago. Uh, when we work with the nonprofit organization in Afghanistan uh, uh, as a volunteer, we brought the uh, food for uh, for the camp for the people. Uh, um, we, we are not going there for the filming. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I saw Shai said uh, uh, he was very funny and and uh, uh, and intelligent. Mm -hmm. uh, he had uh, so many hopes and dreams. Mm -hmm. and I, I, I have a deep connection with him and I was displaced by war too. When I was a child, uh, I lost my father when he was uh, uh, with the, during the Soviet uh, Union. And then uh, it, we became a refugee in Iran. Uh, Shaisa also has a lot of, uh, lost his home and uh, his family members in the war. We understand each other. Yeah. Hmm. We became a very good friend. I took him several times in the pool, and he said that the, the, the waters taste the, the what's it called, the milk. <laughs> we spent a lot of time together. Then I asked him uh, if I can film, and uh, he agreed. Shaisa hmm. uh, never lost hope and dreams, uh, neither did I. As an Afghan filmmaker, I want to tell a story about love and hope about my country. 
Yeah, as Golasan was saying, he became a really good friend of ours. Um, we didn't go in there with the idea of making a film at all. And it was, you know, he would come over our house quite often. We would go visit him in the camp. He introduced us to Benazir. And then that's when we saw that there was just this really remarkable kind of just chemistry between them that was just, it was just this, the simplest of things, the seemingly smallest of things that for us became the most important part. And what really drew us to the story is, is their relationship. And that's really what the film is about. Mm. Can you tell us a bit more about their relationship? I mean, when we meet them, are they newlyweds? Yes, when we meet them, they're newlyweds. And um, they're they're very playful with each other. That's how they've always been. And so um, like that, the, the beginning of the film when he serenades her with that song and she just like, is like, you're crazy. Like this is, <laughs> you know, he's like, I'll sing you a better one. Um, there was many times that he would just break out in a song like that. And that was kind of the way their relationship played out. And it's, you know, he, He's, he's really interesting because he went a, a, you know, kind of against tradition in many ways, like first with wanting to join the army, but also even with his marriage, like it wasn't an arranged marriage, um, like most of the other people in his family had, had gone through and had wanted him to do. He saw Benazir in the camp and he fell in love with her and asked her to marry him. So it was like his whole life was kind of taking a different path than what his father had, had wanted him to do. Um, so they were, they were newlyweds at the time. And I think that they just, um, you know, we followed them over the period of several years and they just, yeah, there, it was just, a, it was a really beautiful thing for us to witness. Mm. Yeah. I mean, and it's so, you learn so much, um, in this film, obviously about, you know, what life is like for him and, and in Afghanistan today. Um, one of the things that surprised me, you know, I didn't know that, uh, that it was so hard to join the army or that, um, you know, that how his family considers it dangerous mm -hmm. um was that was that something you wanted to to show or when you go to submit the, the your file or, or and it needs like a, some people from the government just uh, 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 guaranteed and sign for you and 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 then you're like a, your family too if like you lose like something from the from for example uh radio or the gun it, it it has a lot of responsibility yeah so it looks like when they're when he's joining like in some ways it looks easy because it's like he's like i have a third grade education and he just brings in this one paper document and they're like okay yeah we're happy to have you join but then he's like you need this guarantor signature which actually makes it incredibly hard because that person is is saying that they're gonna be responsible if you do anything wrong in, in the army at all. And, you know, it's not a story about joining the army, but it is, I think that just that interaction really um, in a subtle way touches on the state of the Afghan National Army at that time and all of the, 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 the things that they were up against, you know, what they talk about like insider attacks and insurgents from other countries. And um, it just, I think it gives you in a subtle way, a perspective about what was happening before the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan again. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have a clip from the film that uh, addresses this, so. <laughs> Yeah, 
پدا گرد کیم کی بس سوک نسته مثال چه پدا میلی اردو کی ودریش مسئولیت مرد نلرو زم از اجازه ندار کم برو را جدی چه 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 دا کار وای بس مرد از آیات نسته شریکت آوریه طالبان مشت کسان پویلاس پر بدودش کلام کلام پریک کما غلط ورجا نمورد نه بلشه کوایش رو دا کار بایش نیمه کم است so that gives a bit of a view of what we were talking about, but also I love that clip. You get a real sense of Shaista's fiery passion and energy too, right? Yeah. Why do you think uh, he he wanted to join the army so badly? You want to answer? Be, yeah, because he he doesn't he doesn't want a, like easy money. When you go when he go to Poppy Land, you know he he got like a easy money. But he wants to get the responsibility with long term for for his family. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, that's an interesting point that I think you bring up is like that you we consider it easy easier to to harvest poppies right in an, in a Taliban controlled field like all the way in southern Afghanistan and make this like help 15 hour or whatever I don't know journey by road um, that's covered with landmines and but. Um, that was the safer path in many ways, according to his family, because it's the path that they had already carved out for him. It's what most of the young men, young men from the camp already do. And so his father, he had his father's approval and you get like a, a fixed salary that then can support you. Um, you just work for three months and you right. su can support yourself for the rest of the year. Um, but he also, you know, he was just really taken with the idea of, of defending Afghanistan too. And um, just being the first, I think. And I think that scene also just shows you how he is willing to stand up and defy his elders in, in a place where it's not always acceptable to do that. He doesn't like to living in, inside the camp. He wants to go, he wants to get the, um, like a, like a house, like, a, yeah. like him, like me, like other people, like, but he doesn't, he doesn't want to live in the tent. Yeah. I mean, as a side note, it's not in the film, um, but we did film some scenes with him and his uh, mom who, act who actually died a few years ago. And he was telling her how his dream is like to get her out of, out of the camp and get a five-story house. That was like the specifics he kept in the king. He wanted a five-story house to get for his family and that he was really believed that it would happen. Mm. Um, I know there were some challenges in the filming. I know you, you in order to sort of evade uh suspicion you shot for an hour at a time here and there can you talk a bit about um the filmmaking process in that way sure um well we well by the time we started making the film most people in the camp already knew us and were familiar with us but um there are some people that you know we, it's a very large camp there's some people we didn't know and we did just want to be careful about not wanting to attract too much attention for shaisa and benazir um so that's why the majority of the film really takes place um, behind the walls of their home, a lot of it, um, because that's where we felt that we could get the most intimacy in their story anyway, and it kind of drowned out everything that was happening on the outside too. So we just kind of came in, we had a, a small camera um, also because that's all we could afford at the time and just like a single lens and we would visit really frequently because the camp was very close to where we lived um, in Kabul. It was like a 15 minute taxi ride or so that we would just come over and visit Shaisa and Benazir whenever we had free time in between other jobs. Sometimes we had our camera, sometimes we didn't. And it just kind of went that way over a period of three years um, in, when we were in Kabul of just filming them when, whenever we could for, for short periods of time. And during the, she's pregnant and then we take her to the hospital and just yeah. Like for checking and and because they're such good friends of ours, we just became really closely involved in their lives in other ways outside the film. Um, so that's one. Even though the film took us so long to make and finish, I think that's probably one of the best things about it too is that we just were, you know, be able to be with them instead of just like kind of flying in and out. Um, we were able to just be present, and he would call us and. Um, say when something happened or he needed our help and we would just be able to drive over and, and see him. Mm. I mean, it sounds like you must have had a lot of footage when you sat down to edit. How did you craft? I mean, the film is 22 minutes, I believe. Right. So I imagine you had a lot more. Um, yeah. How did how did the editing process go and how did you uh, think about, you know, crafting this narrative, this very cohesive narrative? 
Yeah, I think we weren't sure when we were when we started whether it would be a short or a feature. Um, but I think then as we started shooting, we thought it'd probably be a short. You know, we just weren't we you know we weren't really sure where the story would end up. Um, and also because of like lack of funding, we're like, how can we make a feature on our own? It'd be easier for us to make a short. Um, and so we just, yeah, there was, I, the original cut was about 35 or 40 minutes. And then that's such a tricky length with festivals we found. Um, so we had submitted to festivals and, and didn't get into a bunch of festivals and we were like feeling very discouraged about everything. And um, then we, we, we worked with really wonderful editors, Melanie and Kristoff, um, who just really helped us like to figure out, and, and many friends of ours who had watched cuts as well. Um, and then we just figured out like, let's try to get it under 25, which was so, it felt so hard to do. And even now, like I feel there's a couple scenes that I feel like oh, I wish that we would have been able to include that. But, I, but ultimately I think the film works, you know, at, at 22 really well. Um, but it's just like one of those kill your darlings moments that yeah. you know, it's in our head and what, what we saw of it. What are some of those scenes? It was, you know, it was like these, it was these small moments. So it was like little moments between him and Benazir where they're mm -hmm. like sitting by the stove and they're just telling jokes to each other. And it's this playfulness where he's talking about if I join the army, like you're going to be alone. And then she's like, I won't be alone because I'll have this stove with me. And like, it's just like, but <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so, so, so it sounds silly and inconsequential, but it was actually really, really sweet and beautiful. Um, so th those are the things that, that I think about most. No, but I think that that is, is the power of this film is uh, those human moments, those silly, seemingly inconsequential things. And I think, especially when it comes to the Oscar race, we're used to seeing Afghanistan and the Middle East portrayed in a very specific light, right? And your film is such a refreshing um, contrast to that. Thank you. What, I guess, yeah, when you set out to make it, were you sort of thinking like, I'm so sick of seeing all these sort of tragic portrayals of my home. As an Afghan filmmaker, it's important to tell the story of, of my country because I know my country, my people. I was tired. The news about my country, always war, guns. That's not the whole story of my country. And my country is beautiful. And, and, and I know we have war and life is uh, hard. But my people are all, all also have strong, and we always uh, have hope. Mm. As an Afghan filmmaker, I want to tell like a, um, to tell a, to support to surprise my people with with the love story, mm. because people don't ex ex expect a love story from Afghanistan. I want to change the way people see my country. Yeah. Yeah, I and mean, I think you said it really well that it's like their audiences and international audiences, I think, have certain expectations about stories from Afghanistan and, and from the region. Um, and so with this, we wanted to really challenge those perceptions that people have just because, you know, in, in cinema, you can flip things on their head just by presenting things as they really are and, and as we see them, you know, being in Afghanistan and of course, through Gulasan's voice and, and lens as an Afghan filmmaker, and then through me being married to him and, and having lived there for so long. Um, so that's what really compelled us to, to tell this story um, was just we saw something really just beautiful and unprecedented in this couple and, and their love story um, that opened up a world, even for us, you know, even I know you talked about it too, like a, a new world for you, like being behind those walls um, in the camp with uh, this, this young couple and that we wanted in, in turn to make the world of the audience even just for a short while. Hmm. How are they doing today? Um, it, it's, it's hard, but uh, uh, because then especially the situation of all of Afghanistan and and because he he called me, I want to I want to I want to make a small party uh, as a um, the the our our film um, publishing uh, Netflix, and but uh, finally he called me again. And I'm sorry because the the Taliban right now it make a, a uh, what's it called the 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 uh, station a police station a police station behind the behind the 
like uh, the camp if it, it, i'm scared if like the sound is up maybe coming to play music yeah that they wouldn't approve he of. wants to celebrate with this with the sum of their friends yeah mm -hmm. he wanted to play music like he they do in the film earlier and celebrate and have a bunch of his musician friends play and um because they were really excited about the film being released and then because of the music um and the taliban's approach to music they and now that they've opened up an office right behind where he lives he didn't mm. I mean, we're doing that. Oh. Has he, has he, in, uh, have he and Benazir uh, seen the film and yeah, what was their reaction? Over, over WhatsApp. Through WhatsApp. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. You mean you watched it together on WhatsApp? Yeah, it's like we had to, well, like, yeah, he was or on you... WhatsApp and then we played it for him, like through our phone on WhatsApp. So, wow. <laughs> yeah, because um, it's just not fast enough for him to download it on, on his end. And yeah, it was just like, they were really happy. He was smiling, Shaisa was smiling like the whole time. I think it, brought back a lot of memories for him too because we started shooting in 2013 you know mm. yeah how old is he at the beginning and at the end I, I don't know exactly because it's very hard to get get the age but when I was there like uh, I think like when we started like 17 he was 16. maybe 17 or so when we started okay so yeah right now it's like maybe like 26 27, 27. yeah he doesn't exactly know um, because he hasn't really kept records, um, you know, of, of his age and because they've lost so much because of being uprooted by the war. And he has so little possessions, like they have like a tin, a steel case, and it's just got a few things in it, including his ID. And it's so faded. And so it was hard. It was hard for him to actually confirm. Um, I want to uh, ask both of you a question. I know, you know, audiences have a lot to to watch these days, but with, with so much out there to see, what is one thing that comes to mind that might entice someone to check out your film? As Golasan said, we, we want to show um, Afghanistan the way that we see it having lived there and to, you know, change your expectations of the kind of stories and even the kind of people that you associate with the region. And it maybe is hard to relate to Shaista in some ways because of like his living conditions might not um, be similar to audiences right like who have a home and who haven't been uprooted and displaced by the war but I think that the love story itself is universal and um, that you can we can learn a lot from this young couple who have nothing really in the world um, but they have the world in their hearts and they have hope still in spite of everything and so um, the film is 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 about how love can overcome all the odds and I think that's what we would hope take, people can take away from it as one of the things. Mm. Gulistan, what, what do you hope people get from the film? In Afghanistan, as a, like a hope and dreams and people, uh, 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 people uh, as a can like uh, with romance. Mm, uh, like <laughs> yeah, uh, like uh, as, yeah. And, uh, and same as we got married with, with, with Elizabeth. I got married with Elizabeth and- I would just add on, yeah, that it's like romance. Like you said, romance is possible yeah. and it's like anywhere else Poem. in the world poetry um it's full of poetry it's full of love and beauty um Golestan was named after a book of poetry and so yeah I think just that that we built romance in Afghanistan and Shaisa and Benazir love compels you to build things and that's what Shaisa and Benazir have done too mm. sounds like uh your next film needs to be about your love story <laughs> I'd watch that <laughs> um Thank you both so much. It's it's such a wonderful film, and I'm so so glad to see it um, getting so much love and attention. And um, I hope you you get the nomination, and who knows, all the way to the win. Um, is there anything? I'm curious. Uh, what, just to zoom out a bit, um, what do you think? Sort of the state of like short do, the short documentary form is right now, and what excites you about it. That's a great question. Um, I feel like it's it's in a really great place. There seems to be a lot of really strong short documentaries. Um, and I mean, I for us, I don't think we went into it thinking like, okay, let's just get into the short documentary space. But it's it's a good place to be, especially if you don't know how your film's going to come together and financing and everything. And um, it's just, it, it's an easier kind of format to tell stories, but it's exciting to have all these it's really exciting for us, especially that Netflix has come on board um, in support of this film too, which is a short doc. And um, yeah, I, I don't know if I answered the question exactly, but I think I think it's an exciting time. 
Yeah, I think they're much more accessible. In some ways, the doc uh, category, I think, has really benefited a lot from from the internet more so than maybe the narratives or the animation, because I think people are getting information through media in this way, and and your film is is part of that. We we <laughs> hope you watch the film um, because it was it was something really it was wonderful for us to film, but also really shattering for us to film an experience um, as it and and yeah we hope we hope that you see it. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you so you much. So much.